the Honorable Member for Laventel East Movant. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise to speak on the Marriage Amendment Bill 2012. And this bill seeks to amend the Marriage Act, Chapter 4501, to transfer the powers conferred on the President with the respect to the issue of marriage license to the Minister. Mr. Speaker, the changes proposed by the Minister would in fact give some persons who wish to get married an easier route. For example, Clause 5 of this bill, which seeks to amend Section 20 of the Act, will now enable the Minister to authorize the District Registrar the authority in the case of a resident and non-resident to issue his certificate to them without the non-resident having to be in the country for as long as a week before the intended marriage date. Mr. Speaker, we have no problem with this because recently a friend of mine who lives abroad complained that she had to come in this country for a whole week before her intended marriage date. And I feel that this will help the situation. Mr. Speaker, it is definitely inconvenient to many persons who are interested in getting married in Trinidad and Tobago. So some persons may not have the amount of time to spend in this country before getting married. For example, in St. Lucia, you're required to be in that country for only two days before the wedding ceremony. And in some islands, there's no such requirement. I know the minister also mentioned some of the requirements. Is this seven day limit is lifted, I will expect more persons coming into Trinidad and Tobago to get married. And I'm sure this will benefit the tourism industry. So Mr. Speaker, there's no doubt that those amendments are critical in this bill. But Mr. Speaker, I wonder why the minister came to this house to amend the Marriage Act without addressing many serious issues in the marriage bill. The minister stood up here and boasted about his ministry, he spoke about rapid rail, about a former prime minister and so on, coffee and water in his ministry and tea. But Mr. Speaker, there are some serious issues in this marriage bill that needed to be addressed. For example, section 23. I don't understand what kind of piecemeal uh, amendment is this. Why won't the issues pertaining to the Marriage Act addressed at this time? At a time when there is grave concern over the spiraling divorce rate, not only in Trinidad and Tobago, but throughout the world. And children should not be allowed to marry children. Mr. Speaker, stable marriages are formed by persons who have completed a number of developmental tasks. And these include discovering one's identity, taking responsibility for one's well-being, and being a person of integrity. And these life tasks are usually completed in the late teens to mid-twenties. So a person younger than 18 years is neither physically nor emotionally prepared for marriage. Mr. Speaker, this brings me back to Section 23 of the Marriage Act, which deals with consent to marriage of minors. Mr. Speaker, because of the seriousness of marriage, I mentioned before, children should not be allowed to marry. To marry, and marriage should be between consenting adults. Mr. Speaker, the law does not allow a person under the age of 18 to enter into a contract. So why must we allow children from as early as 12 years to enter a marriage contract? The age for individuals eligible to vote and to obtain a driver's permit is 18. The rationale here is that these privileges require a measure of responsibility and maturity. The Marriage Act, Chapter 4501, provides for Christian and civil marriages for minors, which under the Trinidad and Tobago Constitution defines a minor as under 18 years. The provision for minors contradicts provisions within the Marriage Act as it provides in common law for girls to marry at 12 years and boys at 14. Mr. Speaker, the Muslim Marriage and Divorce Act make the age of consent 12 years for girls and 16 for boys. The Hindu Marriage Act makes the age of consent at 14 for girls and 18 for boys. The Orisha Marriage Act sets the age of consent at 16 years for females and 18 for males. 
And this is said to be the most liberal of the acts because it allows for the female parent to give consent to the marriage of a minor, unlike the others which require paternal consent. And the female's consent only in extreme circumstances. Mr. Speaker, there are indeed contradictions in the laws governing marriage, age of consent to sexual relations, and the legal age of 18 to enter into a contract, conflicting with each other. The age of consent for sexual relations under the Sexual Offenses Act is 16 years. However, it is okay in Trinidad and Tobago for girls under the age of 16 to engage in sexual intercourse once they are married. Sexual intercourse with a minor under the age of 14 is an offense liable to a life sentence in prison. So Mr. Speaker, on one hand, it is a serious criminal offense, and on the other hand, it is okay once you are married. Mr. Speaker, the Marriage Act discriminates against girls. As a woman standing here and perusing the act, I feel very, very offended. There is indeed a negative impact on the personal and social development of girls. And this is recognized by global organizations concerned with women's rights and gender equality. Early marriage reduces girls' opportunities for education. They are also denied their childhood, and this imposes even life-threatening pregnancy-related complications. Mr. Speaker, the Central Statistical Office report of 2009, because that is the latest report that is on the internet, reported that from 1997 to 2007, there were 104 marriages of children under the age of 15, all of them girls married to older men. Mr. Speaker, Trinidad and Tobago is a signatory of the Convention on the Rights of the Child and the Convention on the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women. The Marriage Act of Trinidad and Tobago violates these two United Nations conventions. I wish to suggest that the minimum age for persons to marry should be 18. Children should not enter into marriage whether parents approve or not. Some of the problems facing our society today are because children have been making children. Many of them do not understand their role as parents. Many young parents are still in need of parenting, and it is unreasonable, therefore, to expect these individuals to become responsible parents. Children having children may very well be one of the factors influencing the rise in crime in our beloved country. Mr. Speaker, permit me to quote from an article from the Trinidad and Tobago Mirror dated Friday, the 5th of October, 2012. The headline states, and I quote, raise marriage age to 18, says Hindu woman, end of quote. In the article, the Hindu Women's Association organization recommends that girls are sufficiently mature at the age of 18 to give their free and full consent to marriage. Mr. Speaker, I quote again, Ms. Renuka Kangal, Public Relations Officer of the Hindu Women's Organization, told the Trinidad and Tobago Mirror that a petition was being prepared to send to the government. End of quote. Mr. Speaker, I would like to sign that petition. I wish to suggest to the Minister that there is a need to look at the Marriage Act as it relates to children in keeping with international obligations. Mr. Speaker, it is important to note that there is research to show that the older a person marries, the greater the probability of success. The fact is that teenage marriage has less than a 50% chance of survival. And several research studies show that when both parties are teenagers, the divorce rate can be up to four times that of marriages begun by couples after the age of 20. Mr. Speaker, I attended a wedding recently and the bride was late. I never knew that there was a time limit in any day in which persons had to marry. 
It is only when I heard the pastor mention that the marriage might have been null and void because of the fact that the bride was late. It's then I realized, well, you know, there is a time you need to get married within that time. So while I was perusing the um, marriage act, I saw that section 28, and I permit me to quote section 28. A marriage shall be solemnized with open doors. Well, I'm not to understand the sure about the open doors, but with open doors between the hours of 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. And 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Mr. Speaker, why does a person have to be married by 6 p.m. on any chosen day? And I, saw, I, saw it, I remembered Cinderella when I saw that, because I know I'm wondering if it's a bride, you know, like Cinderella at 12 noon will get back into rags or so at 12 midnight when the clock strikes midnight. Why is it up to 6 p.m.? What is the reason for that? So, Mr. Speaker, you know, I looked at the Jamaican Marriage Act, Section 27 states that a person can marry between the hours of 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. in Barbados from 6 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. So, Mr. Minister, I urge you to examine our act and extend the time because I see no reasons why person have to be married by 6 p.m. And I feel that this will also be to the benefit of locals and tourists as well, you know, because I could just imagine a wedding on the beach starting at sunset. Oh, yes. Mr. Speaker, on, on March the 8th, we will be celebrating, definitely. You will be invited. Mr. Speaker, on March the 8th, we will be celebrating International Women's Day, and it is important that we continually seek to improve the lives of women. And it will be a good gift to the girls and women of Trinidad and Tobago if the government amends this marriage act and increases the minimum age of marriage to 18. And there are four marriage acts which enact ages of consent that differ for both males and females according to their chosen faith. In conclusion, Mr. Speaker, I would like the government to reconsider the country's legislative position on consent to marriage of minors in the Marriage Act in alignment with the expectations of the Convention on the Right of the Child. How many of us know any 12 or 14 year old who of their own volition will choose to be married at that age? And if the government chooses not to amend this Marriage Act, Mr. Speaker, by increasing the minimum age of marriage to 18 years, then we on this side wish to remind you that this is a serious violation of the rights of the child. And Mr. Speaker, you know, like Pontius Pilate in Matthew 27, 24, I would end my contribution by saying that I am free of the blood of these innocent children and I wash my hands. I thank you, Mr. Speaker.